this episode, there will be news injections, peep shows, riots, and of course, indie games. And maybe even more of this. <coughs> indie Game Riot, with Patreon supporters like Suzanne J, Richard K, and starring Keen, Hot, and Juicy Maverick. Get in on the action by visiting patreon.com slash indie game riot indie game riot coming to a computer screen near you this week we've gone home to electric boogaloo john simulator has been assimilated into google and do not forget to sign up for irx jam happening very soon i just ate a bunch of hot food so tomorrow in the bathroom is going to be a riot an indie game riot episode 125 Indie Game Riot. (laughs) (laughs) Indie Game Riot! Hey everybody, I'm Josh, and of course joined by Tech and Rev. Hello. And we're all here to uh, create the the Triforce of indie games. Um, don't sue us, Zelda or Nintendo. Uh, and they do that for Triforce that they copyright that. I don't know. Probably. Anyway, uh, we're we're the true we're like the Captain Planet of any games. I don't know if we can get too good at you. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Captain uh, Planet, I like that. How's yeah. how's your how's your weeks been? Uh, oh. go ahead, Tech. Go. You weren't here go. last week, Rev. You go. Fight over it. I was here last week. He was here last week. Was I? It was my <laughs> intro. <laughs> I missed something. Were you baked out of your mind? Oh, what did you do? No. <laughs> no. Uh, Rev. You know whatever. I broke my phone broke and I didn't even do anything about it. I literally woke up today and my phone was broken. Hold on, let me grab it. Let me just oh, that explains the no text. Yeah, um, I don't know if you can you can tell no. how shattered how shattered that is. There we go. Now you can see. The oh, shattered. yep. I it can just, see. Literally, it, just... it literally was on my bed and then it fell and then it hit the corner of my my desk leg and now I need to replace the screen. You don't have a case. So I can't use that phone. Uh, it wouldn't have mattered because it, it's literally like a puncture point right on the screen. Oh, you just got and, unlucky. And it's, it's a metal. It's like it's like a metal T bar. So it's like my desk is being held <laughs> up like that, and it's like it's like a square piece of like hollow metal for the back. And it, so your like, phone's like the of it. your phone like deliberately tried to kill itself. Yeah, exactly. And you know what's funny too is that any case that I would put on this wouldn't have fucking helped at all. <laughs> because it was just like, pure screen yeah, damage. Right well, my, screen damage. My case yeah. has saved it has saved my phone a few times already just by yeah. from dropping it. But that that's just straight up unlucky. Oh god. But I mean, it's like not having a phone is kinda nice. I can't Oh, I know. I went out I went without one for years. This, yeah. Before this mm-hmm. phone. Yeah. But then and then the power went out today. Like unexpectedly. And so, Does the power ever really go out expectedly? Well, it's like, oh yes, well, the power is so going out tomorrow afternoon. Just FYI, day. it's a clear day, and it's it's Wednesday, and it's like six p.m. Well, you know, not a cloud in the sky. It's not going to rain for a someone week. Someone like wreck into a telephone pole? No, emergency maintenance, and oh. it's like only my neighborhood. It's because you live in Maryland. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly, but it's back now, so just in time. That's right. all right. That's all that matters. IDR yeah. is love. Exactly. IDR is love. And I was freaking out too because I was like, I don't have because I don't have power, so I don't have internet on my on my computer. My phone has 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 the four G, but it's fucked, so that doesn't matter. <laughs> well, can I mean, is so, it still like? Can you still use it? I mean, even though it's hard to look no, through it, like no, it doesn't no, like. I, it's so shattered. You, I can't touch the screen. Because yeah, I've seen people like I've seen so many people that like have messed up phones, but they can still no, use it's, it. No, it's it's if if I, I I haven't put this thing in my pocket. I've literally just sort of like carried it around. It works. I will say this: Moto X, 
uh, good on you because I can just shake my phone and my flashlight turns on. So that came in handy today when the power was out <laughs> because I didn't need but to then like, you push can't it charge up. it. <laughs> well, I can charge it. It's just like I, I'm afraid that if I turn it upside down and like shake, just the, the glass is going to come off because like I can like feel the crack. I ugh. I don't glass in my fingers. Not. Yeah. It like shaves <laughs> off like the top layer of your skin. Yeah. Have yeah, you done that before on like something really razor sharp? No. Nope. On, on accident. Thank God. I've done that. Yeah. I've I've done it to like I've done it. Um, have you ever stabbed yourself with your own nail? Uh, like your own no, finger I, and cuts your I real usually, oh. I don't I have I usually trim my nails. I usually bite my nails. So. I can't I can't have short nails or else it's like I can't touch things. You should so get those like, like LaFonda type. Oh yeah. Super long. <laughs> bedazzled. Yeah. Just knives attached. That would to my go nail. with your that would go with your bearded lady persona. It would totally. Yeah. I could look like I could look like uh like Keen in yeah. the in the Wendy's in the Wendy's ad. You and Keen can be sister brothers. <laughs> yeah, totally. And he also he also wants to know why <laughs> he also wants to know why you built your desk out of an Erector set. Uh this this desk was built in like the seventies. And so it, <laughs> it's it made of like pure lead. Steel and and composite wood. <laughs> Built strong enough to hide under it yeah. for, for a nuclear nuclear blast. Yep. Totally. It's one of those. Yeah. Speaking of nuclear exactly. blasts, how are you, Rev? Uh, I feel like there's one going off inside my head. Um, I almost didn't come on the show today. I've been... So we've been having some, some wonky weather down here, and the pressure's been changing rapidly back and forth, and that's one of the easiest ways for me to trigger a migraine. And I've literally just been sitting in the dark, st- like staring at my computer, going, "Dear God in heaven, don't be bright!" Like all day at work today, <laughs> I, was, I was like, "If you make me open my eyes, I'm going to hurt you." Like I, that, that's all it is. That's um, why whenever I have a choice, I keep I keep all my screens on like the dark mode, like dark skins. Yeah, I, generally I have everything themed that way as well. Plus, you know adjusting the brightness but uh like at, at work i don't really have an option or control over some of the tools that i use so uh but yeah other than that like my my laptop's still dying um that was part of why i dropped out of the call today apparently it had issues with uh having the stream up plus skype plus it had issues with notes. being a computer yeah, even now, still in Skype, it still hasn't loaded Josh's video. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just staring. Oh, good. Now like, I can I just like. Can... Now well, you no, don't know what I'm doing. I'm also doing. watching the oh. screen, so I can, I can see this, see on the stream. Um, but I haven't had, I haven't, unfortunately, I haven't had a whole lot of time to, to do any games or anything to play games on. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'm alive. So you're nice. basically just waiting for it to actually like just completely die 100 percent before you get a well no i kind of need to have money so i'm kind of hoping it limps along Until long enough for the... me to yeah yeah right. there, there's that whole like you gotta survive and be responsible before you can i don't know what yeah. you're talking about rev Man. no no, no. I, I you have no idea how hard it was last week and this week knowing that like Oh, I could just use these next two paychecks and not eat or have gas or pay my bills um, and and I could make that work. I could make that work. <laughs> like I was trying to plot out, like, okay, do I have enough ramen on hand? No, do I need I to go really spend fifty need... bucks first. So do I really yeah. need sustenance. I mean, come on. Uh, well, for me, I've been. Uh, I actually signed up for uh, the YMCA last week. Oh yeah, you were uh, telling us about that. Have yeah. you used your membership at the Y? Every day, uh, just about. Excellent. And. Um, my body is is hating me for it. Nah, dude. Uh, nah. Of the gym. Yeah, they, I mean, I seriously. Do they like, have a pool? They do. Swim. Um, swim every single day. Swim every single day, and you will lose like fifty pounds. I'm not even kidding. I know swimming's the really. Easiest. It's oh actually. I mean, it's it's just the fact that it's like. Oh, then I gotta get in my freaking swim trunks. Oh yeah, and yeah. yeah. The, mm-hmm. You know that whole thing. And then I gotta yeah. go shower with like naked old dudes. By the way, that was funny. Like they took us on a tour after we signed up. Huh. <laughs> Speaking of naked old dudes. And uh, they so they take. And here we have a naked old dude display. <laughs> yeah, they might as well. That's but the locker rooms were. Yeah. I assume they were like here's a, here's the guy's locker room. They take me in. My wife's waiting outside. Here's the guy's locker room. I walk in, and that's the first old thing I see. Old fuzzy nuts, some right there. Du- for for some old dude just walking around bare ass. And I know it's a locker room, so it's like 
whatever. But it's just you're never prepared for that, you know, no matter what. Did I did I ever tell you why I never go to the gym? What? And never will. So back in the day, uh, my my wife was was very much like, yeah, I got a gym membership and we should and you should work out. And I was like, nope, I don't work out, refuse to, blah blah blah. And she's like, they have a pool. And I was like, actually, that wouldn't be bad then, you know, do swimming, you know, just do some laps and then use the sauna. And uh, wanted to test it out so she could get somebody in as a as a potential you know draw to see if they'd sign a membership. And uh, I went in and did my swimming and then uh then i i used the sauna and then i went in had a shower and everything and uh i kind of don't have body shame when it comes to like locker room so i'm standing there i've got like one leg up on the little bench in front of the locker and i'm like drying myself off blah 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 and this guy comes walking into the locker room and like pauses and i kind of like glance over at him <laughs> and then go back to watching the 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 rugby match that was up on the television and like i I can see him out of the corner of my eye walking further in, but he's not like, he's not like walking with purpose. It's just kind of that side scuttle. Mm -hmm. And and he's like locked eyes on me the entire time. So I'm like, ah, drying off my groin, blah, blah, blah. Like start getting dressed, walk out. And, you know, I finished getting dressed and I walk out and this time, by this time he had kind of disappeared. My wife was still working out. So I'm sitting in the, the chairs out near the, the entrance, just kind of passing the time. I think I was reading a book and, uh, this guy comes walking up to me and, uh, and he goes, Hey, I, uh, I just wanted, you know, I, I, I saw you in the locker room and I was like, yes, you did. And it was kind of creepy. And he's like, well, I just wanted, just wanted to let you know, you, you have a very, very nice body. <laughs> you do a lot of working out. And I was like, that's really kind of fucking creepy. I appreciate the implied compliment, but I've never worked out a day in my life. This is anorexia. <laughs> and he was like, well, you keep up the good work. <laughs> wow. Man. Well, so, that's, yeah, I'm glad that hasn't happened. I, I mean, in. Well, Step foot in the gym again. In the uh, in the old dude's defense, he 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 was actually in pretty good shape. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I just wasn't prepared for all that, especially when I'm like talking to like the Y employee who's in there with me, and I'm just like, okay. And I tried to act cool because you know you don't want to be all immature, like oh it's a dick, you know. I'm like, ooh, old fuzzy testicles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, it's like when you're not prepared, you know, like th- that that is something, you know. Like, yeah, and uh, <laughs> but I back to the, back to the original point is that my body hates me right now because. Uh, from working out in like two particular areas of my body, like right, like right in my pecs, like near my armpit, and then oh yeah, in the, mm-hmm. in the like the back of my thighs, like right above my knees, and they're both muscles I used to like move. <laughs> so oh, it oh, really wait, sucks. So how many days have you been hurting like this? Uh, today's first the day, worst like day. The first... I've been like oh, I've dude, been working out every day except for the weekend. Tonight. Have fun sleeping tonight. When well, you took, want to roll over, I took some, <laughs> you're going to be agony. <laughs> I took some ibuprofen, so oh, hopefully that help. helps. Yeah. I, I have this problem. I have a somewhat hard bed and a somewhat hard pillow, and I and, and, and I end up always sleeping with like this arm like this somehow, yeah. and so it throws <laughs> my shoulder out. So it's like whenever I, yeah, I, I do but, that too. But the worst part is, is like that's, that is like the way that I can fall asleep, right? So... So there'll be times where, where my shoulder is just not having a good day and I try to roll over in bed and it's like, no, you're going to be in an no, I do that. Pain. I do that exact same thing except yeah. it's my it's my left arm usually. Uh-huh. Yeah. And like, you know, that's really kind of cool. Anyways, got, actually, I do that too. The synchronicity in sleeping uh-huh. habit. It's so strange. <laughs> I do that too. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Like it, it, like your shoulder, like right around the shoulder joint is just like, yeah. yep. mm, I'm nope. not moving for a while, so you might as well just... Uh, Get used to Hurt. this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hurt forever. Hurt forever. Uh, well, you know what's going to really help these bodily pains? An indie news injection. Yes, sir. Are you bored with the same old games? Yeah. Why, then give yourself an indie news injection. Thanks, indie games. Starting off this week's indie news injection, we have to remind you that Indie Revolution Expo is coming to your faces. Uh, let's just make sure I get the right dates here. It is July 14th through July 16th from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on twitch.tv slash Indie Game Riot. Coming check it soon. Out. But, Two you know, it's coming months. even sooner than that. Yes. The 
Indie Revolution Expo Game Jam, yes. IRX Jam 2017, which is running 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, May 13th through 1159 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, May 14th. You have 48 hours to make a game. And I believe that the, the rules are make it i mean you can you can see a list of the whole rules uh uh the full rules on indie revolution uh indie game com slash indie revolution expo slash irx jam slash or just go to indie game hit the re- hit the indie revolution expo button and, and it'll it's have a drop down menu stuff. actually if you go to indie game com and then just yeah, hover over IRX the irx Hell yeah. tab and then you just hover over it uh, uh just re- real quick too um with indie revolution expo Sign up your games, but also sign up panels. Yes. Uh, if you think you have something to talk about regarding indie games, sign up for panels. Um, also. And then about these jam games, they will also be uh, represented during the uh, during IRX in July. Yeah. Um, Guess what else is happening uh, May 13th through May 14th, Josh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a charity stream. Charity stream. Charity We're stream. We're raising money for charity water. And uh, I essentially am gonna try to host the whole thing. Rev, Rev and I will be <laughs> popping hours. in and out based yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've got and I've got another friends. friend too who um, I might play some games with while you guys are out to like keep me keep me alive. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. he's over in Sweden, so like the times work out. So uh, <laughs> probably be doing that. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. We'll probably stream it. We're gonna we're gonna stream it. We should stream it to the Indie Game Riot Twitch, but. I'll give, you, I'll give you. I'll give you the stream the code for it. Yeah, yeah, totally. But so, stay tuned for that. Get your wallets ready and everything, because that is happening in like four, three, three days. In honor of IRX Jam, three uh, days, and we can keep. You, you know what that helps too is that people working on the games throughout the night and throughout the day can yeah. listen to that in the background while they're coding. And not only that, but hey, uh, we'll we'll get a, a hashtag ready. I don't know if this episode's actually going to go up by the time that it happens. Well, but Jam seventeen is the hashtag for the jam. Well, right, exactly. So, so, so if you want to live tweet your your development while we're streaming, we'll you know catch up with the teams who want to you know keep us updated. It'll be a lot of fun. It'll be. Which reminds me, everything. after this, I got to send out a newsletter type thing to the jam participants that we Brilliant. have already. So Brilliant. I can remind them of that stuff. Um, yeah, you know what else you need to remind people of? I got to remind people of Allow the fact that Google uh, has recently acquired Alchemy Labs. Uh, if you don't know who Alchemy Labs are, uh, that is the dev studio. Um, we covered a game a while back called Discourse, which was a really cool um, kind of a, a choice-based game. Um, really stylized and it was a lot of fun. Um, but recently they've been a lot more, um, it's been a lot more, their games, their most notable games have been VR games, which have been Job Simulator and uh, more recently than that, the Rick and Morty VR experience. Uh, I forget what the actual title of that Rick is. Rick and Morty Virtual Rickality. Yes, that one. So they've been acquired by Google and they're very, very happy about it. It was really cool. Um, it, that obviously would restrict their indie status yeah now we can yep. no longer call them indie games yeah. this but is the last owl, time owl, owl kimmy but owl i will kimmy. say i will say that you know i'm happy for yeah. um the people at alchemy because they're very excited and obviously whoever you know actually owns alchemy um or if they maybe they all have like a piece of it um are probably yeah. doing well with money now <laughs> uh outside of the games that they've sold because they uh, the Get other some games of that sold google money well. yeah um <laughs> And with Google resources means, you know, they could probably do some really crazy stuff in VR, uh, which it seems like they've been concentrating on recently. So um, congratulations to Alchemy Labs. I hope you enjoy your success that way. Um, You know what else is... Speaking speaking of of success... success, Uh, so we uh, we have our own little like best in show like this is our riot of the year you know that sort of thing but uh, kind of had to think what what kind of criteria what what indie games would go into an indie hall of fame specifically like like what kind of criteria would you judge it by what kind of here's the thing where I put this this discussion point in Um, okay just to give you some some 
feedback or whatever I'm trying to say. Context. Um, <laughs> I'm actually talking to um, Jacob from Indie Hangover mm-hmm. about um, setting up an actual Indie Game Hall of Fame. Ooh. Okay. Um, it's just a concept right now, but I, there is a video game Hall of Fame. Which right. some indie right. games have taken part of, like Minecraft, which is no longer indie, but you know whatever. Yeah. Um. So, but we we were th- I thought it'd be a really good idea to have one specifically for indie games, so they could be represented. You know, whereas there are some indie games that might not be put into the video game Hall of Fame because of their indie status for whatever reason. So, okay. and cr- you mentioned criteria, and some of the criteria uh, that I was thinking of would be. Um, first of all, I was thinking uh, they'd have to have been fully released for at least five years. Okay. No, I disagree. That that limits a lot of games. Well, I mean, they will eventually be released for five years. Uh, yeah, name... name. I mean, Wait, what do you think name, about it? Well, well th- that, okay, so you, here's you the thing. Remember that that's every... J- just so we're clear, that, that starting now, that means that a game... 2012. 2012 and older. No, not from our games. I mean from any games. I know. That five years ago was 2012. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And 2012, indie games were shit. You no. take that back. They, but, indie, okay. Like, when, 2012 when, was the start of the golden age. Well, like, right. prior to that, prior that to that, that... That doesn't mean that, that there there were... Name... Uh, okay. I, I'm i gonna look. I'm gonna look. Let's Here, see. Hey, I can let tell me, you right me, now some of the, my Super first... Super Meat Boy, yeah. Braid, Spelunky, yeah. Castle uh, Bastion, Fez, Faster Than Light, Limbo, um, Castle like, Crashers, like, uh, Band- B- Binding of Isaac, that. Castle Crashers, Terraria. How about Dwarf Fortress? Uh, my- about Minecraft, Fez Minecraft before it went so indie. Fez doesn't or count. Before it went AAA. Uh, Fez came out in 2012. No, it came out in 2013. But either way, Unless the point is, is the point is, um, I mean, they're not going to be, we're not going to be shoving... 100 indie games into the Hall of Fame immediately. Clearly. You know, there's got to be a limit to every year. Date, April 13, 2012. There's got to be a limit to every year. So, you know, say five to eight indie games, right? Every year. Yeah, okay. Right? So, five years ago, I think, is is perfect, especially considering that that's including all those games that Rev listed off pretty, pretty much. Right. Um, okay. No, I, I see what you're saying. I, but... So that... But, I mean, obviously all this is, like negotiable because it's just right. ideas well There's, official you, well, okay okay officially with with what you're talking about yes i totally agree for now however if we're just talking like dream team here let's talk dream team right <laughs> what are some of the games that like really really touched you in all the naughty places that you don't want to talk about Journey. my first experience with indie games outside of like i mean technically Technically, Super Meat Boy before it was Super Meat Boy because Meat Boy was on Newgrounds as a free yeah. game. So uh-huh. technically, yep. there's that. Um, That's true. Minecraft, obviously, um, and then and then uh, sorry, I was reading chat. Uh, Braid was one of my first experiences. Braid and Limbo were some mm-hmm. of my first experiences with indie games. So the games like that. And uh, to go back on to with with a couple other thoughts on on um, the. Uh, like requirements criteria criteria yeah. thank you um, is maybe a certain number of copies have to have been sold approximately um, that's reasonable. there are some really you know good gems out mm-hmm. there but the point is the point of a hall of fame is not just success but also their impact I think on the indie community whether it be through innovation or just inspiration or anything like that um, so while we love the Count Lucanor, for instance, yep, it's probably never going to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, you, you know what? what I'm okay, okay. Let me let me. He, here's a here's a game that we can argue argue uh, semantics over. It was released October twentieth, two thousand eleven, and it is an indie game. Although the studio then released a a a, a, a the sequel as a triple-A title, and then bought it back from that. But this isn't that game. Payday the Heist. The first one. Not the second one. Not the, not the second one. The first so that's, that's one. That was gonna published be a ch- and created by Overkill. That's going to be a challenge. It was an indie game. That's going to be a challenge for, for this whole thing, is, is deciding what is an indie game. 
I would almost say that um because I don't know about that. Um Yeah. Well, it's it's not going to show up the same now because Overkill got got purchased, so all the numbers are weird. But right. But I mean, you could say the same seven thing 7 years ago. Minecraft being with, you know, Microsoft now, but it it's Well, but but that's it's different because that on indies. But, but <laughs> let me tell you, man. <laughs> the, no, for re- for real though, for real. In terms of well, l- l- let's just say this: seventeen thousand reviews on Steam. Yeah. Very positive. So that, again, back to the criteria. This one I'm not so sure about because this would disqualify some games. I think that deserve more attention. But then again, right? Because uh, because I was thinking about it... having scores be a criteria from like various press outlets. Oh, However, no, 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 no. scores are so scores are no, so no, no. relative. However, they also tend to still kind of coincide with. Yeah. Generally speaking, sold. but I, w- I wouldn't say no. Um, like, like uh, unless you've got a really, really good case for a dark horse, but um, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't like having numbers involved in it either. Personally, yeah, yeah, I agree. I was, I, really, I was on I the fence. That, about I think it. that the game. Well, the thing is, is that I think that if you have to get numbers into it, the game doesn't stand up for itself. Right, right. No. Because like, like, there, there are we, we some. We shouldn't have to look. We there are know. some games that I absolutely cannot stand that sold, and, and, and I think contribute literally nothing to anything ever, but you know, sold better than Jesus. So here, here's an interesting thing too. First of all, let me mention too that I, I would probably want a broader uh, panel of judges. Right. Yeah, than clearly, just us clearly. and Jacob because yeah. we have a pretty I mean we differ in opinions but we also have pretty similar tastes like I don't know if any of us really like Gone Home however <laughs> um, <laughs> however does anybody however it's hard to deny that Gone Home was a successful and B kind of had a strong influence on the indie market with the whole uh, style of game you know it shouldn't matter it shouldn't matter the games should just be good. If the game isn't good, then it shouldn't fucking be there. But see, that's where the, the no, no, panel no, no. would come it, but, in. Well, well, right, that's true. Because I but guarantee like, you there's plenty of other press outlets that were like, <clears throat> Gone Home was amazing, obviously. Yeah, but have they played anything else? That's <laughs> what I'm getting at, is that, <clears throat> like, as as a, as a as a standalone experience, is is that, and, and not even using names, it, it's like, is that standalone experience better than another standalone experience and why right because because when we're talking like apples it's apples to oranges but well for real we like, can't, it's hard to do that because i mean what happens then is like again go back to minecraft minecraft yeah. obviously started a genre um but then you well, have things like terrar- well for the most part i mean i know there was door fortress and stuff like that but you know what i mean everything's like well it's trying it, it's to the take one inspiration that, it's from the one minecraft. that popularized the right. genre so there, okay but, there, but the there point you is go. that's the point is that, you know, we'll start with Minecraft, and then no, you'll 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 start you'll start with Dwarf Fortress. You want yep. to talk? The I'm just trying to make a point. Just, just yeah. Okay. Okay. Dwarf, fine. Dwarf Fortress is the king upon which all dead all indie right. games. All right. Suck off Dwarf Fortress real quick, <laughs> and then let's go. That's <laughs> nah, fine. Um, Everybody already knows. So, but just starting with Minecraft, that popularized it. We'll, yeah. you know, use certain terms. Um. And then you have things like Terraria and things that came after that, right? So, this isn't my opinion necessarily, but just say Terraria, people consider Terraria to be Minecraft, to be better than Minecraft. Let's just say that. And some people do. Yeah. Um, well, it's also still indie. That too, but it, besides the point. Yeah, exactly. So, comparing, saying that Gone Home might not be better than, say, Firewatch, which I actually did enjoy Firewatch more. Um, right. It's not really fair because they built on top of the previous game and had the chance to improve. You know right, what I mean? But but that's fine. Right, but I'm just saying like to exclude Gone Home and put Firewatch in, if that was the case. Right. Or Minecraft exclude Minecraft and put Terraria in or whatever. Well, but so so but then it, but then at that point you really have to say like Because at that point which, I'm just saying but, Gone Point would have more influence on the community, on the industry and therefore in my mind, that way I, deserves to I be in. Yeah, except, I see what you're except saying. That's like saying. Except that's like saying that Infiniminer should be in the Hall of Fame, but Minecraft shouldn't. Because Infiniminer is the reason why Minecraft is so good, and it was there first. 
Well, Dwarf but, Fortress, but I agree. Actually, good. Dwarf Fortress could you know? could could be in there. I would agree with that. So right. But but again, I think, I think there's Minecraft. The good. I don't think. The, I, I mean, like the influence should matter somewhat, but I I it I feel like it. Well, the problem is influence isn't really quantifiable. Um, right. Yeah. So that's really based on the judge opinion. Exactly. So anyway, the whole point of it is, is that I had this idea for the Hall of Fame. I talked about with Jacob. But like these are the right. requirements that we we're thinking about. Um, uh -huh. Obviously, a lot more fleshing out to go, and the discussion is supposed to be like it maybe which pick, games would we put yeah, in there? Pick some games that like are definitely like you would just be like that is a fucking Hall of Fame indie game. Pay to the heist. Jesus, one hundred percent. I don't even know if that's indie. I still don't know. I uh, uh, Overkill. When when this game came out, Overkill was indie. Eh. And and eh. they haven't updated the game since. Like, like and again, that's going to be it. such a hard part of doing the whole thing is just because people have such differing oh, opinions on what makes things indie. Like right. if Tim, if Tim was uh, an, an, a judge in this for some reason, if if the devs did not live on ramen <laughs> yeah. while making the game, he's going to inspect their pantry. He's going to go over to the house, inspect their pantry, and like uh, well, I don't see enough to cobwebs be, to be in fair, here. Though, to be fair, though, like honestly, it, would it be fair to say that that we should give? a Hall of Fame spot to, like, Bastion or Transistor when it's WB Games who really has the money in it. I see, like, how I... Much, how, different, how much different is that from Ubisoft being like, all right, here are a bunch of developers. I mean, it is different, right? It's different but, because they started off at... with no resources. The The only thing, in that case, the only thing that WB but, really but the did game, but the was game give was them released. a distribution point. Well, except WB owns the game, essentially. Do it's they? sort of like, hey... I don't think so. They might take a cut. Well, well, but but he, the thing is, is that if you want to get out of that contract, there, that's that's a big deal. I mean, and, do you know their contract? I mean, well, just in general, it's a contract. Uh, hold on. Uh, but I would go. personally, and I talked about this on Discord uh, yesterday. I would personally yeah. put Bastion. I think Bastion's a Hall of Fame game, in my opinion. But I would say Bastion's an indie game, whereas Life is Strange is not. Or uh, yes. Valiant Hearts is not actually. Because... I I take that back. Transistor would totally be indie, but uh, Bastion wouldn't be. What? Yeah, yeah. Because Transistor was full indie, published by Supergiant. No, but uh, Transistor yeah. was published by WB. Well, except well, then what the fuck? Bastion is was their first game. Useful. How how is Steam absolute bullshit on telling me? No, no, no. So on Steam, Bastion was published by Warner Brothers Interactive okay. and developed by Supergiant. Right. Transistor was developed and published by Supergiant. Maybe WB they isn't it there. Well, maybe 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 they had enough money from Bastion that they decided well, to just Exactly. Pull the thing is, thing is that Bastion is an indie then. But it yeah. is because they started they they started and they started living on ramen and then but, took in and, the and then they got sweet. picked up. Big thing, but but that's that's what <clears throat> Again, the argument that Tim made last week, that means that they're not indie anymore. They right. were indie until they got picked up, and once they got picked up, they're not indie anymore. Just like it doesn't matter That's if Microsoft be... says, that says question... all right, Mojang, you have 17 people working for you. Now you have 800. Make Minecraft better. It, it, it doesn't matter if they the say whole, you have the to whole, keep the same people. Like, the whole, well, WB doesn't own... Super giant. Okay, so so no, we're stepping. Don't, don't. Hold, but but what what if what if somebody like okay so so Bungie bought themselves out of their contract with Microsoft after okay. uh, uh, the, yeah. the 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 Halo debacle. Right. Um. So so until they got picked up by Activision, anything that they made, would you classify <laughs> that as indie? Yes. Well. Uh, that would that see that falls into the into the weird. There were only there were only forty people on the team. There but were then, only forty people but, on but the but team. But yeah, that falls into the whole weird like technically indie. Valve is indie. And technically, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, but Valve hasn't made a game in thirty years. What but the point is about? the point is, is that. No, no. But so, but here's are. the thing: if Bungie if Bungie was like, we're not going to go to a publisher and we're just going to release this game. Technically, technically, that's pretty indie. And Bungie, Bungie also if has a, if Bungie, had a Bungie in themselves could be considered trip like 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 there are publishers like Ubisoft develops and publishes, correct? 
but we still consider yeah. Ubisoft AAA. It's the same yeah, thing yeah. with Bungie. Like They're still AAA. And, it, and that, again, that, that comes down to their resources, and there's like things like Triple Indie, we could say. And that's going to be the hardest part of the whole Hall of Fame idea, is really figuring out well, what is it, considered indie. What okay, we really so have to, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to set a line and be like, on this side of the line, it's indie, and on that side of the line, it's not. And we're going to piss off tons of people because we've been arguing about this for three fucking years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so going back to the question that Josh asked, uh, some games that I would throw on there. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Limbo and Super Meat Boy are a no-duh. Those yeah, are yeah. really, mm-hmm. between those two and Fez, uh, those are the ones that See, really... I would going into into indie games. I would vote no on uh, Fez, personally. I, I, I didn't say include Fez. I said Limbo and Super Meat Boy. Yeah. I was using Fez yeah. as the rounding out. That's part of why I got into it. Okay. Um, that Dragon Cancer, if that it doesn't end up in there, like I would lose my shit on people. Really? Journey is another one. I don't know about um, Dragon Cancer. I mean... Whether you like it or not, doesn't it's not matter. about liking it. Like, what has it really done for the industry? Like, it's not like it's the first experimental, uh, uh, you know, story-driven like game. That isn't one of your requirements. But it, it's it's it is a requirement to to have that like opinion uh, of certain games. Like, what is well, okay, the requi- well, requirement? Is, so, so, so here's so, the thing. So, so here's the thing about that Dragon Cancer. In defense of of what what Rev is saying. And to sort of tie it all in to to ask the question, does it make you feel more than all those other games are trying to make you feel? I felt pretty heavy when I finished Papo and Yo, and I wouldn't include that either. That, okay, that, that fair enough. Good point. But that and doesn't change my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just disputing uh, your opinion. Now. Uh, okay, one Papers, one that, that I Papers Please, pr- I would say yes. Old yeah. school, yeah, it has to. It has to be. Uh, is that yeah. old enough yet? I no. mean, eventually it will be, but yeah. Um, I think that eventually, I mean, like, eventually, if we're talking, like, really, like, who we really want to put in, Stardew Valley, clearly. Stardew Valley is probably... And, and, and here's, <sighs> here's why. Here's why. Because it doesn't matter that not many people put it as their 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 best game of the year when, at, when it came out last year, but so many big reviewers worded stardew valley like this when they talked about it they were like stardew valley wasn't my favorite game that i played this year but it's the game that i played the most this year well that that would i would argue is because pacing is bad and it's basically the exact like like it's a deeper clone of an older game like like the fact that have, why have I played 113 hours of fucking brilliance? Because you're unemployed and you ha- and, and OCD. Yeah, <laughs> but but truly, truly, uh, I I will say that I I understand your skepticism about this game. And if you go back, right. I was like, I I saw I, this game and I was just like, fuck this game. But you play those old games and you play this game and you're like, oh yeah, this game. New one. Fair, fair yeah. enough. Here, my, but my, peep, my concern, by the way, our Peep Show game is probably if you like Stardew Valley. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm I'm stoked for that. But like, but but you know, like I would I would oppose that. But if you were to say the Binding of Isaac, which I absolutely hate, I would absolutely say it belongs in the in the Hall of Fame. I would probably. I'm I'm actually in the same boat as you. I don't like the, the game one. but you're probably I can't stand it. I think I have a grand total of 18 minutes played in it and yeah. it, it's like like there's no reason not to include it. It's pure so here... indie every every front and it is by far one of the like like it's second to only things like Jesus and Minecraft. If you want to talk about popularizing a genre that popularizes right? roguelikes. So um, well, here's a side well, question. We, we can't say that because we're not calling them Isaac likes. We're calling them rogue likes. <laughs> the rogue, the game that popular. Well, you don't call Terraria like, Minecraft like. You would call it a blocky, like a what do you call it? Voxel no, art. I, I, I call it 2D Minecraft. <laughs> but That's what you call you have it. To all, you just <laughs> Come on, guys. Rogue did it. That's why you call it. Rogue <laughs> exactly. Like. But, uh, but like, go ahead. So side question. Okay. <laughs> uh, side question is if 
Say so because I just thought about it. Since Super Meat Boy right. and Binding of Isaac would probably be in there, uh, right. would you put individual devs by themselves in, oh, or fuck. or publishers or you know well, or things like that well, outside of just I games? Would. If if they okay, so like, if they have a track record of independent video games under their belt that are all or the fantastically well done like like and i'm not talking like somebody comes out this year and puts in like six Notch. new games like five fnaf if i if he keeps going then yes i would throw him in the hall of fame but like like fnaf might be in there someday even if you don't like it right no no I, again that's a, a even if I despise, like I hate the fucking games. Can't. I feel like I feel like FNAF would would be in there. Honestly, actually, not to not to totally derail this, but I think that FNAF and Fez would go into the Hall of Fame. Not Fez for the same reason. No, no, for the same reasons because Fez didn't have his, games, have an impact on games. Except what? that Fez Fez had the the thing with Fez is that it it essentially was one of the only modern games that brought you out of the game and into the real world to like solve a lot of its eh, fucky pu puzzles. I don't, like, and I don't think that that's good. Mm. Like, I don't like that. I think it's really annoying. Fez, and I don't like, I don't, Fez I really isn't don't the like first that kind of puzzle oh. like that. And it, and it oh. didn't have an effect on the industry. Like FNAF does FNAF yeah, you, you know gave what, birth to, to yeah, but FNAF, okay, but then again, you're also you're also talking about who is fucking lucky enough yeah. to be published during the time that YouTube's algorithm fucked up and made it so at any given time there were you know seven plus games uh, or let's plays. This is around the time PewDiePie got involved. This is around like Yogg's Cast. Like none of this would have happened if it hadn't have just perfectly been published during the time when all of that was in YouTube's algorithms on their home page, mm, on their yeah. home page. So, mm -hmm. so you can't really be like, well, you know, it doesn't it change the fact though. It, it, that it, it kind of does. Had, it didn't change the fact that it had an impact on the industry. Fez did not. Right, but Fez did. No, the Fez only thing did. that Fez is famous for is Phil Fish. Is in, the in, game, in, in, in the game, the game movie. is okay. If, if the, any game the movie hadn't happened, nobody would have give a, given a fuck about Fez. Yeah, I yeah, guarantee. Fair it. enough. Except you know, then you have what like when we okay. So when you describe when you describe in the game, the movie could be in somebody, the, in the no, no, uh, Hall of Fame. By that, way. That's true. That's true. When you describe Poncho, which won our uh, our IRX Game of the Year Another last year, another game that probably wouldn't make it, but would be cool if it wouldn't. Did. But I would yeah. like it. It'd be like when you describe Poncho to somebody, how do you describe its art style? I describe it as Fez like because it is. I described it as cool. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, its art style is cool. Yeah. What image does cool? So, so it's, you uh, say its, its uh, art style is cool, art. and I'm thinking of the inside of a freezer. Yeah, I just pixel it's art. pixel art to me. I don't know. But I look right. at it. And I see it, it directly inspired by Fez. It's the same general I mean, I art style. It's the same perspective shifting. I can see that, but is, it, the point is that it's not like how many of those games are there compared to how many games came out of like FNAF or whatever. Fair enough. Well, so okay. Slenderman goes so, in, then, yes, because oh, yeah. there's only 600 million. Oh, Actually, yeah. The fuck needs to be good. Like Slenderman, Cave yeah. Story. Cave, Cave story, story is is automatically going in there. I mean, it has to. <laughs> Truly, it does. But like, you're, you're right about Slenderman. Like that would actually probably qualify uh, based on the well, influence. You know, you know, you also have to consider too that that the Hall of Fame doesn't have to doesn't have to be like we can have a bunch of just like oh yeah this is the Hall of Fame because it's shit, it's like so bad but everybody plays it, you know. Well, it, again, can, that's that's why we need a large we need a there, bigger every panel. Every game that gets in there can get in there for a certain reason. Like oh, think right. of it, I don't I know you guys aren't into sports as much as I am, but yeah, uh, if you all. anything know about like the football Hall of Fame or any of those kinds of things, Vaguely. basically you know they have they basically bring in like. I don't know, uh, just a whole bunch, uh, like 50 to, I don't know how many are, there actually are, but like a 50 to 100 uh, writers, like from, or people out of the press, basically. And they go in, cast ballots on who they think they should be, and they have their requirements or whatever, and they cast ballots who they think they should be in the Hall of Fame for this year, based on those requirements, and then they whittle it down, little by little, until there's like, I think I'm between five and eight. Um, and they also include... Um, things outside of just players you know they include coaches owners um 
and in the actual museum it's museum itself they have like you know this is the game winning football the football that got the game winning touchdown out of the super bowl that sort of stuff so um i think it's a pretty and and, and that's why i'm i'm imagining for this especially when i'm talking about like like a, a panel of people judging and and picking who goes in uh i just don't know who at this point, I don't know who or how many are, uh, should be invited to do this, or you know who would actually be interested in doing it. You'd want you'd want you'd want a a healthy basis. Um, Just be a good represent spread out representation. Right. So, yeah. well, here here's the thing: you throw uh, whatever it ends up being. Like, if uh, to use your sports ball analogy for their Hall of Fame, what you want to have happen is roughly. Uh, comparing it to baseball hall of fames uh you're going to want it to be roughly 70 percent press that cover indie games right. and then split up the remaining 30 percent among devs you know really popular players and um you know something else right and that's the other problem actually is just that is is getting those people to be interested in doing it <laughs> it's right. not like it's easy like you mentioned like players like it's not easy to contact pewdiepie or markiplier or whoever uh it's not easy to contact uh big name devs necessarily uh depending on who it is like you know you're like hey notch what do you think he'd be like fuck off um, yeah i think <laughs> I, you're making an assumption there uh, but the point is that they get messages like rami i've talked to rami before i talked to him on skype before but when he like ninety percent of the time he is super busy, and when you email him, you have to go through like, you email his main thing, and then you have to go through like another email, and then that tells you to go through another email because he's got like, so many emails coming in, and he's always traveling and busy, and he's he organizes it that way, but it is right. a giant pain in the ass, and it's really hard to get a hold of. So, um, you know, it's like things like that 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 there's hurdles in the way. Yeah. But, uh, if you have any ideas, leave them in the comments below wherever you're listening to this. Yeah. What uh, if you're on if you're on the go, uh just call our Indie Game Riot phone number that <laughs> is on maybe the screen. exists. That 717508 yeah. Riot. Um Perfect. by the way, if you uh speaking of, you can also tell us what games you think should be in the Indie Hall game yeah. whenever the first Give us your happens. top 10. Give yeah. us your top 10. So uh you know what uh could be in some people's top 10 speaking of gone home. <sighs> <laughs> the next game on starting the riot. Woo! Ah! Huh? This week on starting the riot, what remains of Edith Finch? Finch, not Fitch. Finch. Edith <laughs> Finch. EdithFinch.com. Like uh, yeah, like like the bird. Uh, it's a um, interactive story game. Where you uh, you basically go through it, it tells the story of uh, of a family and all of the cursed. family. Yes, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. So it is. Uh, it basically, there, there are snippets. It, it's 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 paced a little a little weird, um, at least in my opinion. Where you have little snippets of each uh, like member of the family, where where you're sort of like getting a taste it's, for like what, what's going on well, but it's, an, it's it, an anthology it's supposed to be like it's that sort, it's sort of like uh vignettes all covering you know different different the times. last day of that family member's life yeah Dungeon. and um it, you can pick it up for twenty dollars <laughs> that's like all the tech has good to say uh, about it you can buy it for 20 okay bucks. well let's just get the out let's just people, let's just talk about the elephant it. here people really like it let's just it's talk about the elephant simulator. you want to talk about it. we mentioned earlier about gone home oh. you made a joke about it in your intro and okay. it is it is pause, definitely pause, in that pause. genre before before you do it's this different. Just, it's different it's I need to point out that uh, the title screen, the title that Josh threw up, says "What Reamens of oh, Edith." Oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> oh man! Hold on, Let's fix it. Reamens. Well, while he's fixing that, um, yeah, I would almost, I would say that that this game has, on a scale of Gone Home to Firewatch, it's closer. I don't know. It's kind of right in the middle. It's kind of right in the middle because it's, 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 it's so disjointed in a way. It's an anthology. Because, because it's, 
telling. Well, right, exactly. But it's an anthology that's like two hours long. If okay. if you take your time, right? So so you're 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 given these snippets of stories about uh about all these different family members and it it, it it's very interesting. You know, it's you it's like kind of creepy. From Rick it really yeah, exactly. It it um it really like it, you, you get into like a lot of things and i think that that the storytelling itself is is very very good really like in, in terms of a story driven game it, they got the story right okay. it's it's very they they do a good job of telling the story for the most part so i mean um, th- these kinds of games are always end up polarizing and i know i give gone home shit totally. and yeah. i gave firewatch some shit too but i thought it was better yeah, than gone home and then he played it <laughs> but i think that i think that i would rather Honestly, I would rather play Firewatch. I don't know. There's a really cool uh, aesthetic to this where it's it's it doesn't it doesn't first of all it doesn't lie to you like Gone Home did. Uh, That's, Firewatch yeah. also kind of lied to be honest the, about the whole. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. It's straight. It's pretty straightforward, and there's like a, 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 a kind of a darkness to the game. Um, there's, it, the it's got a melancholy, and yeah, I, yeah, yeah. melancholy. You're you're word. reliving you're reliving the death of your ancestors, right? So, but it's not lying to you like, oh, it might be a horror game. It's not doing that like the yeah. other ones. It's are. just no. like, oh, it's a little creepy. It's a little weird. It's a little sad. It's, it's a little. It's like walking through a really good uh, anthology, like like a written anthology um, yeah. that you can interact with, and they made it really beautiful. I like the art, and it's really cool that. The I like how the text scrolls across the screen. That's a good touch, um, yeah, and, right. and it's kind of like that. Whole, you can like you saw when there was text hovering over the fence. Like you open the fence and like the text goes shattering all over the place. It's cool. Yeah. Um, and there's there's some mystery to this too, which harkens back to Firewatch a little bit to me. Where yeah, except <laughs> Gone Home. Gone Home was mysterious, but it was very much more linear. Yeah. Um, Firewatch was a lot more open. I mean, yeah. it's linear, but but you could go wherever you wanted to. Whereas this is sort of like a, a mixture of the two, right? Almost, yeah. a, you know. Actually, a lot of this, a lot of this game reminds me a bit of um, that Dragon Cancer, where you have these these parts where you're, uh, like you have the, these parts in in this game where you're like exploring and you're kind of like touching a lot of things, but then it like takes you out of that, and then you're in you're in a moment and you're living in a moment. And you're sort of like stuck there, and then the the controls sort of change, and you're you're doing different things to interact with the world. Right. I'm glad that you're not just walking around and clicking on shit and listening to somebody talk about it. Yeah, mm. I do because wish... because Half Life did that with a free game that they released with with Half Life Two Episode Two, yeah. and like that was fine, I guess. But like, <laughs> at least at least there's there there's 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 more. That's actually going on than just walking around and clicking on shit. I do Thanks. wish that there were a little bit more puzzle aspects to not just this game, but all of these kinds of games. Yeah, it's because um, you know why though. It's because they well, the, the the game the game that uh, we talked about a few weeks ago where you're you you play you, you the the bear is alive. That's a really cool paint job in that room. And, I would have um, loved that as a kid. Sorry, go ahead. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? I can't. I can't remember the name of the game, but it's like the like the cornfields maze. And I was just about to maze. bring that. Up. Yeah, yeah, maze. Exactly, maze. That game was like they they plopped you in a thing, and there was like some some cool story elements, Actually, but like you were solving problems and right. and like and like playing a game. Whereas this, the game, kind of plays you the whole time. And if that's what you're looking for. That's great. Maze is actually you know, a really good like, example of this kind of game filled with right. puzzles. They filled that oh, to the yeah. brim with puzzles. Oh, yeah. That's a mm-hmm. really good... I think Maze is a pretty good uh, standard to hold yourself to if you're going to make these, quote, walking yeah. simulators Be- or it, gone home like as I pulled them. Yeah. Exactly. Especially because the like the art is there, the sound is there, the voice acting is there. Like, like everything's there. It's just if you're looking... I, I guess this is the nicest way that I can put this. If you're looking for interesting gameplay, this you, might, you aren't going to find <laughs> interesting gameplay here. You're going to find a story. It's narrative. It's a. It's it's only. It's really only a narrative. Yeah. Truly, like you. The gerbils you could, mixing, missing, <laughs> red, uh, squat, and cough. Uh, I, I I will also reiterate that generally, uh, here let's actually go. I want to go to the. Um, 
uh, the the Steam page right quick because I just want to look at. Uh, I'm looking at the reviews. All of overwhelmingly the reviews, positive. Right, mm. but but look at how much time people have played. Three hours, three and a half, 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 seven, half. But Rev, two, it seems seven, like you're kind of five, siding with four, Tech on on two, this. Two, on this game. two, two. You if know, you look up the full, well, if we if you look up the full uh, game on YouTube, it's an hour and a half. Which is which, which means that you could. And, and I'm not suggesting you do this. And in fact, this is this is something that, that that's that's really unfortunate about it. You could buy this game, play the whole thing, and refund it from Steam. And it's the, twenty dollars. The other thing too is you, there's some people that just fly through it, especially for YouTube's sake. Um, a lot of people who are into right. these kinds of games take their time and explore and interact with whoever they can and get as much story as they can. And did someone just eat a whole tube of toothpaste? And yes. some holly berries. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, I, don't even, I don't even like toothpaste. Oh. But Rev, oh, you, you, it, it yeah. seems like you're siding with tech. But, it it but you, seems you like are it because out of the three of us. Because I can't, I can't argue with what he's saying. He's not wrong. But out of the no. three of us, you, you always take the side of, like, it doesn't matter how long it is. Because I don't well, feel that it does in this case. It's, like, it, like, if you it, think that the... the, the I think this goes back to I think that this is a pretty game and the ob- the people who made it obviously care about it, but it's not it's not a whole lot of game, but it is an experience. And, you know, and, like yeah. like Tech and I and and me and you are going to constantly yeah. uh, disagree argue, yeah. and <laughs> argue on this point because you have a, a certain, you know, dollars per minute of enjoyment that, that you have to meet, otherwise you dislike it. Um, and it's like it's in your brain, you know. Like, like and, and for me, I don't to to me that's not an issue. I don't I don't care. I mean to me like, actually for me to, if to, I if if I gain enjoyment out of the game then it was money well spent which is uh, you know I uh, but again that part of that comes from like like I I am a very budget conscious individual right but I if the experience I, I warrants that amount experience. of money yeah totally I ex- like like I will get more enjoyment out of this twenty dollar game even if I speed run through it in you know an hour and a half. If even with that, I'm going to get more enjoyment out of that because there was the interaction, there was the emotional connectivity, than I will going and spending the same amount of money to go watch a movie. Like, like there, there's more of an emotional draw. There's more of a connection to this. There, there, like, like to me, that that's more important than how long the game is in comparison to how much I paid for it. But th- that's the other if, thing too. Is is you mentioned like experience and like if I were to have paid for Firewatch, if I were to have paid, because I paid thirty bucks for that game, I think it was, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed the game, but it wasn't enough enjoyment for me to warrant thirty dollars for a four-hour game or three-hour, whatever it was. There's there's Good three f- things that are that are variables there: enjoyment, time, and money. So, see, and I don't see it for me. For me, the 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 time and money only become an issue when it's way way out of balance. Like like it, it it's. If I if I pay sixty dollars or their price tag is forty dollars, no, that's way out of balance for an hour and a half game, in my opinion. Like it's not until we get into that kind of huge disparity. Sixty dollars for a game that you are going to sink a hundred fucking hours into, that's sure. way oh, in balance. Oh, yeah. And yeah, and yeah. then you're making the judgment about enjoyment and other things. Yeah. But but at, at, especially at this point we've kind of established that if you're going to make a, a, a narrative game like this, you know, anywhere between 10 and $30 is about standard. And, and, and yeah, granted, that's a, yeah. that's, that's a 20 bit. No, that's 20 a good point. Spread, good point. Yeah. But if you're falling within that standard of, Hey, this is going to, 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 you know, take a couple of hours of your time. That's a, that's a fairly reasonable price. And if I get that going enjoy- on right now, so, I, I have no idea. This is like one of the weirdest acid trip dreams I've ever had, and I hate sharks. So, but like, 
you know, it, it, Tech and Knight actually may, you know, for, for, for him, it's like having sex. It's not very long. He really cares about the production of it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a good way Wait. to put it, though. That's a good way to put it. Like, and it's, if it's, you know, great, sex if it's or... a great experience for the amount of time that you're playing it, that's all that matters. Sex and pizza, like do- pizza doesn't matter. Like, like you have shitty pizza for five bucks, you have tolerable pizza for five bucks, or you can have really, really good pizza for five bucks. It the the experience and the price point don't matter. Yeah, but the size does too. Nah, I get a f- I, I get a five ninety five medium pizza well, from Domino's, and I enjoy that more than when I spend twelve dollars for a small pizza from the local round table. You know, or or mom right. and pop but, in the corner. But but like, you, do like, have, you do have to remember that that um, go, going going back to that whole like it, it, I guess it all depends on what you're looking for in a game because for for the same for the same cost you could get maze uh, which which has different has has lower reviews on Steam but it's it's the same price and it's about. The same amount of time, if you if you sure, look at the for, amount of for thirty yeah. bucks for thirty bucks, you can go on to Xbox Arcade and buy Limbo, Super Meat Boy, Fez, and and Terraria for the same thirty bucks. You know, but but it, that's not the point. It's not the price point to to right. that. Like I'm not going to argue. Like nothing that either of you have said is wrong. Totally, you're totally. just wrong and, well, and all, of, all of the criticisms <laughs> about the game and that's yeah. from my perspective but all of the criticisms about this game again you're not wrong but yeah. i think that looking at it in the context of that uh, is like this is the the be end all like, like text criticisms are valid i probably hold the same opinion like like I, it's a walking simulator that has some odd pacing issues and blah blah like he's not wrong but that's not the point yeah I don't know. I, it, I, it, I, uh, well, tell us. You know, if you like, if you like these types of games, right? If you like I'm the going, the walking yeah. simulator, story driven games, this one you shouldn't skip over because it's very interesting. It tells a, a very interesting story from a lot of different perspectives. Uh, there's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of subtlety that it that it actually you know like that's Folks. nice. Exactly. And uh, but. It's a walking I, I, simulator game. It's a walking $30. simulator. It's twenty dollars. <laughs> tell us what you think. Sorry. Tell us what you think in the comments and yes. uh, about these kinds of games and if which ones your favorites and that sort of stuff, uh, improvements, all that sort of stuff. Um, so good job. What remains of Edith Finch by Giant Sparrow? Twenty bucks on Steam, yeah. and uh, uh, you know what else you can spend twenty dollars on? Hookers and blow. At the peep show that Rev goes to, apparently. Yeah, that's gonna be like like a quarter of a hooker and a little bit of blow. Dude, I have North <laughs> Hollywood to... within driving distance of me. That's gonna be mostly blow and a full size hooker. So. This, is going to, this is going to weird places, so we're just gonna get pizza. Please give all your attention to early access. <laughs> And this week on Kickstarter, the indie... Ge- Wait, sorry, no, just kidding. No, this week on Peep Show, we're featuring a Kickstarter game uh, called Kinseed. Uh, this is... Okay, so the reason I, I took this is because I want to A, bitch, and then B, uh, gush. Um, I, 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 I appreciate what they're doing. This game looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, it is... You know, up that uh, up that alley of of you know time based boredom that tech just <laughs> absolutely adores and will spend yeah. centuries playing. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> however, <laughs> they, like I, I, that's my bitching out of the way. Everything else about this game, I love and adore. I like their art style. I like what they're doing. Like like the time base behind this. Uh, it's made by a couple of the people. Uh, the, the the primary people involved came out of uh, Lionhead Studios before which is also they cool. they went debunked. Um, yeah, which is also indeed is yeah. Fable. No, sorry, different argument. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're they're currently asking for roughly thirty eight thousand uh, dollars, and they're a little bit less than halfway there. 
uh, I think. Yeah, a little bit less than halfway there. They have got 23 days to go. Um, it was some of the some of the devs behind it. There is also a uh, a current build that is available on their Kickstarter. It's a prototype, build. Windows yep. only. So don't go into it with a lot of super high expectations because you will definitely be disappointed. Um, but general gist on it is uh, that you 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 wake up one day and somebody gives you a magical bean uh, and you plant this magical bean and it grows into a magical family tree. And like, it's just ludicrous enough of a premise that it, it caught my attention. And, and so now it, everything is time based. You see characters age and die, and like, like the the control scheme seems a little bit wonky to me. Uh, but I'm sure that's just because I it's haven't spent enough time trying too. to figure it out. Yeah, it's yeah. very but very early. The, build. the coolest is, thing, the coolest thing. I mean, first of all, my first. Very small grievances. You mentioned the art style. I like the art style except for the character models. I don't like the weird monkey arms <laughs> that the characters have. It's, it's just weird to me. I don't know why. You know, fair, fair enough. I can I can get behind that because uh, that was also one of my biggest complaints about Salt and Sanctuary. Like, I love everything in the art style of Salt and Sanctuary except the characters' heads. Yeah. Uh, I don't, what I don't understand is is why all of the uh, all of the art and stuff that they that they have on the page doesn't. <laughs> Like it, it is not conveyed in the in the in the art that they're that they're currently showing. Mind you, prototype that's early a, well, build. They even they even put in the down. video in their Kickstarter video that's an out of date uh, yeah. build. But uh, the other the thing that really like the whole thing was cool in the first place, especially being a fan of Stardew Valley. But the whole generations aspect of it, where that's what sells me. Oh out. my god, that's cool. Where you can uh, first of all, there's like a whole thing where like there's this weird person that can like give you magical stuff to, to give you like boosts and various things but you have to like give years of your life to yeah mm-hmm. but then you have children and then basically you can start with them they you pass on everything to them and and based on the choices that you make and uh things that you do and don't do the town changes people change monsters change and yeah. situations it's, change it's, it's kind of like it's kind of like rogue legacy mixed with uh, Stardew Valley, Stardew Valley <clears throat> mixed with uh, an Fable. actual RPG. Yeah, exactly. Mixed with, mixed with yeah. Fable Three. Yeah. RPG, yeah. Well, I you know what's what's really interesting is uh, is it's it's from the guys who made Fable, and right. Fable One is absolutely amazing. Go I play it right all three now. Of them. Truly, um, but it's 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 really interesting to see how how similar the games really are because mm-hmm. in fable one the whole the whole game pretty much like you start as a kid and then the more of the game you play you get older and it just happens you know if you die a lot you get really disgusting and you know and it, it's like th- that you know it's kind of you know kind yeah. of interesting uh some other fable um connections to me is that you remember in K- in fable like they put this fun like a, it was like a joke kind of a thing where you could like find condoms when you were yeah. there and stuff like that digging up things yeah yeah, yeah. uh and this and it's that kind of humor it has it seems like has carried over into this uh like like if you watch the their video on Kickstarter and it goes through and it's like a really nice trailer type of thing gameplay trailer and then right at the end everything just stops and it just you see the character going to the outhouse and it's just for like <laughs> 15 seconds it's like <laughs> You know, like, <laughs> so it's that kind of humor I think carries over too, which is which I appreciate. Uh, I appreciate toilet humor. That's good. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so um, they're yeah, they're kind definitely. of go- going into some of the nuts and bolts. They are uh, currently they've been making it. Uh, completely out of pocket in their spare time they all have day jobs no longer with Lionhead Studios because I think they went defunct um, yeah they got shut down quasi good riddance you. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, so they're asking for this amount so that they can uh, fund working on it for at least six months uh, and then they're planning on doing a uh, you know, by that time, they they their plan is to have expanded their game engine from the prototype to a proper alpha build that they then plan to release on early access, um, if you know it's possible at that point, uh, as well as Itchio and a few others. And then, you know, they like they seem to have a fairly solid plan for for yeah. how they're deving out. Um, I I will say 
the the whole this is money to finish an early access game to or, a, an alpha game to go into beta essentially is what they're saying mm-hmm. but the cool thing is that this is a kind the kind of game that would actually benefit work. Well, that? <laughs> yeah. it, it would it would work well in an early access situation because you can play this game for a really long time and have a lot of different experiences in it. So yeah. even if so even if you buy it the first day it comes out on early access, I, I, I feel like mechanically what, what they're what they're aiming to do, if if they achieve close to that, yeah. I th- I think that, that it'll play into the whole early access thing a lot better than other titles like like a story driven <laughs> title going early access where it's like yeah the ending is in early access that's coming soon but you can give us money right now and then get disappointed in, right. a, in a year when we release it and forgot well, about and it like they they're also they're also planning to tier things um so if you if you pledge now at uh about ten dollars or so, nine dollars roughly. Uh, you get a digital copy of the game when it goes into early access, and then once they had like like this is backer only level. Once it does go into early access, price bumps up a little bit, and then once they go into beta, they're going to bump the price a bit, and then once it goes into like these guys seem to have yeah. a fairly solid plan for how they're going to draw things through. The uh, Minecraft approach. You know what else? It, you know what else? Yeah. Gameplay wise. I was really into. I forgot about um, mm. is that you can you can't do this in Stardew Valley or anything else that's like this kind of genre uh, that I can think of. Is you can actually like there's multiple ways to play it, yep. uh, and that you can focus on. You can like have your own business and like interact right. with the town that way. It kind of has. It, it gives you a lot of choice. Do you want to be an adventurer? Do like you sandbox want to be really RPG. Relaxed? You can yeah. really live sandbox. the life how you want it to. Is what it seems. Yeah, like. definitely. Um, and they're really not asking for that much. It's only no, uh, they're not thirty eight forty six forty 000, grand eight fifty yeah forty thousand dollars. That's and you know what, it's it's a small team and they're like, look, this is six months of funding. I, I'm I'm it's it sounds like a a good amount of money for six, not a lot. Six months of is pretty time. optimistic. I'm surprised. But but hey, I way, mean, you know, they are they are experienced developers. By the way, uh, Tech and I asked in the chat, uh, does this have multiplayer? I'm pretty sure no. it doesn't. And I don't think it's in the plans either from what I can see of their stretch goals. They do want to bring it to, like, other platforms, um, you know, like like other, like other consoles, consoles and stuff like that. Um, but that's up in the air. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've also got uh, music. Uh, oh, never mind. Just title music. Uh, well, some of the some of the, the composer from, from Fable, Russell Shaw, is back. For yep. the uh, for the title, BAFTA title nominated composer. Uh, also, some of the stretch goals that they're looking for they're they're not very big, but you know they're they're scrolled down. Uh, if you scroll down a bit, uh, they want to get more music by Russell Shaw in the game. Uh, they want to bring on additional team members to be able to you know get things done a lot faster if they're able to make that kind of money. Uh, and they want to uh, push it to consoles eventually too. But again, that's a funding thing, and yeah. And for but, $644, it's... By the way, they, they have reasonable uh, tiers mm-hmm, for the yeah. Kickstarter, which is nice to see, because a lot of times it goes up to, like, ten grand, which is fine, because there are people that obviously will basically uh, become a producer at that point. Um, but for $500, or $644, 500 uh, pounds, um, you actually <laughs> get to do... The grand old Duke of York! He had 500 pounds. We made him famous in the game, and he loved just how that sounds. You get to you get to do quite a bit f- for that. Uh, I mean, yeah. $644 is still a lot of money, but I mean, you get to have a lot of influence on the game, and, and you get to create stuff and all. I, that's Conceptualized good design and name a legendary item. A statue made in your image to be placed in the Hall of Eternity. We'll write you an epitaph on your very own in-game gravestone. A wandering fae NPC being named after you. Access to the developer sprite editor that they've created. Uh, two digital copies of the game when released to early access. Access to the developer forums and development streams. Digital copies of the Quill lore bible and art books. Copy of the digital soundtrack and a digital art pack including wallpapers, posters, and GIFs, and your name in the credits for all to see in wonderment. 
So pretty good. So value. yeah, yeah. No, it, it seems like like I, these guys have put together a fairly good campaign. They seem to have the the chops behind them to to yeah. back it up. Um, the music is cute and adorable, and uh, you know, and they uh, and they want they want to get the game to early access by December. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is, which is nuts. <laughs> well, you know what right? else? So, you know what else is nuts, Tech? What? Giving away games for free. Yes, for... and that's what we're going to talk about in free fun. <laughs> this week on free fun, we have a very stylistic and interesting uh, free game called B Swing. B Swing is a game found on Itch.io by Pixel Cam. Nope, that is the wrong thing. <laughs> Let's uh, do that. There we go. By uh, by Jack King Sponer or Sponer. I'm not exactly Spinoza? sure. Spinoza? It's well, his actual name is what he put in oh. the credits, so that's what I use. Jack gotcha, King gotcha. Sponer or Sponer. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce the second part of that hyphenated name. But anyway, um, it's really interesting. It's all uh, watercolor, um, hand drawn, various styles to mix together. Um, mm-hmm. talking about various moments throughout his life. Um, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's, we talked about this before, how indie games kind of, uh, basically they, they, they put, they, a lot of times they'll put the dev's soul out there into the game, kind of like how authors do with books or painters do with their, you know, with their work, pieces of work. Um, mm-hmm. and this is certainly a situation like that. And it's very, uh, Sorry, tech. It's narrative. Um, well, yeah, around. but but he doesn't mind this one because it's free. That's true. I guess <laughs> uh, because it's it's not it's more artsy than the other one. Is that why you hipster bastard? <laughs> I mean, um, it is pretty artsy. <laughs> so you're walking around the neighborhood and you're talking to people. You can interact with various items, uh, similar to a point and click, but it's not really puzzly based. It's just walking you through different experiences in life that help shape him throughout um, throughout his his life. Right. So it's just a really interesting uh, insight into someone's soul that way. The music is very say. interesting. It's, yeah, it's good music. Um, interesting and, good or interesting bad? Good. Okay. Interesting good. It's, uh, it's, also, the, the, find design, it to be the design is so, so strange, right? Well, it's like because, a kid. It's like a kid drew the map. Well, like, well, like well, exactly. But but then like how the 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 their, his use of space in the in the screen, right? And like how how it move how oh, yeah, yeah. your character moves through space and how and how it's sort of different every single time. And so every sort of room has a different vibe and a feeling to it. You know, um, I kind of like it. It's different and. Uh, It'd be an interesting interview piece, I think. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's it's so. I mean, yeah. it's pretty straightforward. Um, not a whole lot to talk about, it, and I don't want to spoil play it. It, it, it is right. just click on it and play it. It is free, free on itch.io in browser. However, if you would like to download the game, they do ask for I think three ninety nine or something like that. Um, yeah, which I mean, four bucks. Support the dev. Come on. Uh, and then okay, can... so here's a here, here's a here's a question for you. This is a walking simulator oh, that tells a narrative. Is four dollars? I, I and and I, I'm assuming the game doesn't take that long to beat. Four dollars, yeah. So you 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 downloaded and played it, or did I know? But I no. I, I would if if okay. I had four dollars just to throw at it. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm going to harp on this some more. I, I'm, I'm crafting better arguments for the, the money to experience enjoyment. You know, I will say that 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 <laughs> I'm playing it right now in browser. And, and I know <laughs> I, 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 I complain about this a lot, but controls tight enough. Tight, tight, tight enough? Tight, tight enough. Like mm. some things are a little floaty. Some of the some of the sort of hitboxes for some of the terrain is a little questionable. And I'm like, I I want to get around this, but I'm kind of stuck. But like everything else, like I love the fact that that it's just really easy. Just arrow keys, hit space to talk to something, and it's like, oh, you're talking too 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 slowly. Just hurry it up, buddy. You know, like you you, you can play this game at whatever pace you really want to. But it's very interesting. It's it's really nice. You to can look interact at. with actually a lot of stuff in in that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. You could you could you could spend a lot of time on this game if you wanted to. 
Uh, it yes. depends on it. Just depends on how uh, frisky you're feeling, I guess, as far as exploration and and wanting to get the maximum amount of narrative out of it. Um, yeah. Oh, this is cool. I like this scene. Anyway, <laughs> uh, any other questions about B Swing? I have none. Well, uh, in that case, you know what time it is. Oh, end of the show. End of the show. Uh, yes, it is the end of the show. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. However, if you enjoy what we do and you want to help us grow and uh, make the show even better, you can always just uh, visit our Patreon, patreon.com slash IndieGameRiot. Um, you can donate anywhere from a dollar or more per month. I always suggest five dollars. All you have to do is sacrifice one Starbucks coffee, and it helps us greatly. We really, really appreciate it. So thank you so much for that consideration. Um, you can always stay in contact with us at IGR Podcast on Twitter or uh, Facebook.com slash IGR Podcast. Uh, and, well, we're on Discord, by the way. Oh, yeah. You find yeah. us on Discord. Sometimes. For uh, some of well, us. I'm always on Discord. Um, I mean, I'm not always, but I when I'm on a computer, I'm at disc, I'm on Discord. Right. right. So, uh, and of course, you can email us, contact at Um, Any last words? We've got a fun, uh, uh, what's the, the type jam, of game? Uh, the jam. Metal. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. F- fuck next week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> IRX Jam 2017. Sign yes. up and also hang out for the 48-hour live stream for as long as you can and donate money if you want. It'll be fun. We're all, I already have a bunch of games installed. I'll be playing games like, uh, I'll probably play some Chroma Squad. I'll probably play some Cluster Truck. I'll probably play some Cross Code. That's I'll probably good, play that's some Crypto the Necrodancer. I'll probably play some Dropsy. Uh, me and my buddy Simo are probably going to play some Dungeon Defenders, which is like an older uh, older indie game that's really fun, but the new one's shit, but that's kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see what else. Uh, I've installed Hector. I'm going to play Hector. That Ooh. game made me a little sick the last time, so we're going to see how that goes. Interesting. Um don't want to play Inverbus Virtus because that'll get us uh, kicked off of Twitch. Uh, there's another one. Really? Uh, don't want to... Yeah, because they're boobs. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. uh, probably, probably play some Nuclear Throne because why not? Probably going to play some Poncho. I installed Risk of Rain. I've never played Risk of Rain. Go! <laughs> oh, I can't wait to hear what your thoughts are. <laughs> That's uh, a good lineup, got... Tech. I'm a... yeah, I, uh, I will try and join yeah. you as much as possible. Hell yeah, uh, dude. Hell yeah. And I don't know so. when I'm going to do these things. I also installed Sanctum 2, which is technically an indie game that, yeah. that's like a first-person tower defense. I don't know if we'll get to it. Rogue Legacy is a classic. Might get to that. Um, Make sure uh, you have some multiplayer games for when I pop in. Yeah, uh, Torchlight 2. Uh, Zombie uh, Vikings. Zombie Vikings installed. Um, uh, try, if, Under Earth is install, installed. Did we determine that, that. Uh, your, your favorite game of all time, Dirty Bomb, is indie? It is now, but I probably won't play it. Okay. Well, yeah, just we'll because it's like the spear. I mean, I could literally, I could play dirty. I, I might, so, so I might play a little to wrap, bit of it. To wrap it up, there's a lot of really yeah. cool games that we're going to be playing, and it's going to be for charity. It's a charity stream, a 40, <laughs> 40 hour charity stream. Um, with I would, I mean, you're not going to last forty eight hours, so we'll figure it out. But yeah, it'll I'll probably like it'll it'll be a while. <laughs> it, we'll be on for as much as possible, and it's to in honor of the IRX Jam seventeen happening. If you are a dev or you want to try your hand at dev at coding a game. 48 hours to create a game. The winner gets a, gets prizes, and at this point, which includes $100 towards the green light entry. Um, and uh, if you donate during that stream, while we're honoring the jam, uh, it all goes towards Charity Water. Very reputable yes. charity. Oh, uh, and, and for request. anybody, and and just and and just for the record, the way that that works is we don't take any of your money. You just give their money to them, yep. like through our campaign that we're going to set up. And so we're not going to steal any of your shit. We should probably do. If that. you have any problems <laughs> with with charity water, you can you can take it up with them. We're just telling you to give your money to, to charitable places if and you, also if, write if, it down for the tax deduction. If for some reason you don't want to give it to charity water because you don't trust them because you're weird or something like that, uh, you're more than welcome to give it to us instead. <laughs> we'll use it for Patreon. But uh, for that weekend, we highly suggest Charity Water because they are actually a good charity. Yes. So, uh, we should probably set that up soon. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, We've only got a couple of days. Yeah. Uh, Say your goodbyes, gentlemen. See you next time, guys. Have a good one, folks. Toodles. Toodles.